you know, the, the initial question was why, uh, you know, why are we, why are we in all these wars and who's making these decisions? Well, in 1992, we promised that Gorbachev, when he disbanded the uh, Soviet Union, that we would, after reuniting NATO, uh, uh, East and West Germany under NATO, we would never move NATO even one inch to the east. Since then, we've moved at 14 into 14 new nations, a thousand miles to the east. Why do we do this? Here's the reason why. When a new nation enters NATO, the contract requires it to conform its, its weapons purchases to NATO specifications, which means billions and billions of dollars for Lockheed, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, and uh, uh, General Dynamics and the other military con con and the other military contractors. Who owns all of those? One company, BlackRock. And these are the people who are dictating what the Democratic Party does. They're moving, they're the biggest owners, and they're moving us into those nations for their good, not for the good of our country. They wanted to go in Ukraine. The Russians said, you promised us you wouldn't do this. You went into 14 countries. Now you want to go into Ukraine. You, that is a red line for us. And, we are, and they warned us, not just Putin, but generations of Soviet leader, Russian leaders have said, that's a red line. You're going to force us to respond militarily. Why? Ukraine has a 2,200-mile border with Russia. It's like Canada and the United States. If we put Aegis missiles, Tomahawk missiles in Ukraine, which are, can be nuclear tipped, we are three minutes from Moscow. We could decapitate the entire Russian leadership in three minutes. This destabilizes the entire globe. They, the Russians have been invaded three times through Ukraine. The last time they were invaded, Hitler killed one out of every seven Russians. So this is a critical national security interest for them. It is zero national security for us. We have no treaty with Ukraine. We have no interest in them. And they said, do not go into Ukraine. Well, guess what? We overthrew the government, the democratically elected government of Ukraine in 2014. That is when the war started. And then, then we announced Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris announced in March of 2022, we're going to put NATO in Ukraine. She went to Germany and made that announcement. Two days later, Putin responded by invading. He had tried to, uh, to sign a peace agreement, which everybody agreed to except for us. And then in April of 2022, he tried again on terms that were very beneficial. The only thing he really wanted was to protect the ethnic Russians who'd been 14,000 had been murdered by the new government that we put in since 2014. And most important, he wanted us to keep NATO out. And because he said, They're gonna, you're going to use it for an invasion of Russia. And we said, no, 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 that's not our intent. We just want, uh, you know, we just want solidarity. Well, guess what? That war was never winnable. They lied to us about it. They said, this would be like Cuba beating the United States in a war. There's no way they could ever win. Everybody knew that. But we went in anyway. We required them. They signed an agreement. Zelensky signed agreement with Putin in April of 2022. President Biden, it's called the Istanbul Agreement, President Biden and, and the Russians were withdrawing their troops. And the only thing they wanted was to protect the people of Donbass and Lugansk, who are ethnic Russians, and to keep Ukraine out. And Zelensky agreed to that. Joe Biden sent Boris Johnson to Kiev and forced Zelensky to tear up the agreement. And since then, 600,000 Ukrainian kids have died and 300,000 Russians. And now guess what? Zelensky has no way to win this war. His army is collapsing on every inch of the front. So he is losing within a year, they will be vanquished. His only solution, what he calls his path to victory, is to embroil our country in a full-scale world war with Russia. So what do they do? With our encouragement, he invades Russia. This is exactly what Putin said you're going to use it for. And we fulfilled all of his expectations. And that's why the rest of the world supports Putin now. 
And then we say, we're gonna give him permission. This is what the White House said. Thank God that the Pentagon brass have revolted and mutinied and said, we're not gonna allow this to happen. The White House said, we are gonna allow missiles to be fired into Moscow from Ukraine. Putin said, if you do that, it's an act of war. We will be at war with the United States of America. Two weeks ago, you know, our country is the only country in the world that has not signed an agreement to not be the first user of nuclear weapons. We've always refused to do that. Russia agreed, China agreed, all the other countries with nukes agreed, we will not use it first. We're the only ones who said no to that agreement. And then we walked away from two long range missile agreements with Russia unilaterally. So we are sending a message to Russia. So two weeks ago, Putin, changes Russian policy and says, yeah, we're gonna use them first. If you have a conventional war against us, we are now gonna use them first. And he said he's going to war. The White House wants this, Biden wants it, Tony Blinken wants it, Kamala Harris wants it. The Pentagon went to the White House, the top generals, and said, we are gonna mutiny if you try to do this. This is going to destroy the world. Oh, we all need to understand we are closer to nuclear war today than ever been before. Kamala Harris is not thinking for herself. It's BlackRock who's doing the thinking for